Welcome back to Gear Daddy. I'm your host, Daddy Troy. You know, when I was a kid, I did some pretty crazy things with fireworks. Well, now I'm a dad, a little more concerned with safety. So in today's episode, I'm going to share with you some of the most common injuries surrounding fireworks, as well as provide you with some safe and fun alternatives. <music> United States each year, over 9,600 people go to the emergency room for firework-related injuries. Interestingly enough, over three-quarters of those are male, which I think is a clear indicator that the fireworks industry has it out for men. Now, all joking aside, if you have a boy in the house or a man in the house who likes to play with fireworks, you might want to warn them that guys tend to get injured a lot from fireworks. A more important point, I think, for us as parents, that over a third of those 9,600 injuries are to kids under the age of 15. What's the most common injury? Well, it's the standard old black cat, the standard old firework. They're the most ubiquitous. The second most common injury, what do you think? You think it's the Roman candle? You think it's the bottle rocket, maybe the smoke bomb? None of the above. The second most common injury is the seemingly benign sparkler. I think this is really important for parents to know because the second most common injury causing firework is one that we tend to give to younger kids thinking that it's the safe one to give to them. So be careful as you give these out. And the third most common injury comes from bottle rockets. So what are you going to do as a family if you decide that you're going to be a fireworks free family for this holiday season? Well, I think the easiest thing for you to do is to get a bunch of glow in the dark toys. These light up kids really, really love them. They provide hours of fun. There are two types of glow in the dark toys. They're kind of that you click, chemicals mix, and they start to put off light for the next six to 12 hours. The second type are kinds that absorb light. And once they've absorbed light, they will re-emit it for a little while and you have to recharge them. There are tons of types of glow toys now, and the most common ones are these bracelets that you can put on right here onto your son or daughter's wrist. These things come with a lanyard that the kid can then put on and put it around his or her neck, which inevitably doesn't get used that way. Instead, it gets used as a thing that spins round and round until it hits some kid in the eye and then becomes equally unsafe as fireworks. When it comes to colors for these, you can get bluish colors, kind of an indigo color and a red color so you can stick with a holiday colored theme. You don't have to go just with the nuclear green. There are tons of glow-in-the-dark toys of the kind that absorb and then re-emit like. You've got some snakes here. You've got this uh, bouncy ball. You even have glow-in-the-dark chalk, which provides for a great afternoon. You can plan out a whole little thing. You also have glow-in-the-dark paint. You can make t-shirts for the whole family days in advance. Glow-in-the-dark gel. And if you get really adventurous, you can get a science kit, a glow-in-the-dark fun lab from Scientific Explorer. Now, where do you get all of this? You can get it at like, a party superstore. You can get it at a dollar store. They tend to have a lot of glow-in-the-dark toys. You can also get them online. A place I shop sometimes for party favors is called the Oriental Trading Company. And they can give you like a huge giant batch of these so you can buy them in bulk and keep them for the whole year for other family parties. So if you have an opinion about fireworks or just want to tell us a crazy story of something you did when you were a kid, go to dadlabs.com, upper right hand corner, and click on the Dad Labs crib. It's where we discuss things that are related to dads. We'll see you next week on Gear Daddy and all week long at dadlabs.com.